Hello, Dan Schwimmer here. Welcome to today's vlog. Some short items, couple, could be a little more than a couple, before we get on to the main subject. I'll start out with something that I was hoping to report. Turns out I can't from what I just heard on the news. The Senate seemed to have a deal on the stimulus package, the package to help all the people and the companies affected by this coronavirus epidemic. It looked like they were all ready to vote on it in the Senate. I just heard that Bernie Sanders put a hold on the vote. I guess that's something that senators can do, that you have 100 senators and any one of those 100 can prevent a vote. So that is being held up. Hopefully, pressure from, I hope, from other Democrats or other, I can't say other Democrats. He's not a Democrat, actually. He calls himself a Democratic Socialist or an Independent. But hopefully the Democrats will pressure him into releasing this hold. I think it would be really bad if the Senate gives in to him and changes the whole bill just to satisfy one senator. But we'll have to stay tuned, so I can't report, I was going to, that the bill was passed. And even then, it still has to go to the House. Nancy Pelosi adjourned the House until tomorrow, so the House isn't going to do anything today anyways. I guess it's not a priority for Nancy Pelosi to help all these people and companies being hurt by the coronavirus epidemic. It's too bad. I want to move on now to Joe Biden, who apparently is so eager to be president of the United States that he is pretending to be president. He is broadcasting, I guess you could say, or podcasting from his house. He has a little podium set up where he discusses what he would do if he were president criticizes the actual president. I'm going to put up this short little video. It's pretty much gone viral. It's been around. It's one of these talks that Biden is doing and he is just screwing it up. It's unfortunate. It's sad. It's showing that he is mentally not all there. He embarrasses himself, but I'll just put the video up. We need to activate the reserve corps of doctors and nurses and beef up the number of responders dealing with the crush, these crush of cases. And, uh, and in addition to that, uh, in addition to that, we have to uh, make sure that we, uh, we are in a position that we are, well, let me, let me go to the second thing. I've spoken enough of that. The president must use the Defense Production Act to radically increase the supply of critical goods needed to treat patients and protect our health care workers and first responders. So you see what I'm talking about and what more and more people are talking about. I would be gloating if it were any other politician, if it were a younger politician, if it were a politician who had no, what I see are obvious brain function problems, the onset of dementia or Alzheimer's disease, I would be gloating if it were somebody else who did not have these problems. But it's Joe Biden. He does have this problem. And I just feel sad. I really feel bad for the guy. I think it's unfortunate that he's running for president. It's sad what he's going through. The only thing I could think that would be more sad would be if he actually were to become president. I'm hoping that doesn't happen. Next item, Donald Trump, as I'm sure everybody knows, has been holding daily briefings in the White House to give us uh, an update on the fight against coronavirus. He is always there with at least one medical expert, either Dr. Fauci, Dr. Burks, and very often both of them, plus other government officials, relevant officials, to address other aspects of the fight, such as the stimulus package, the status of the stimulus package, handling travel to and from the United States, various other aspects of this comprehensive fight against the coronavirus epidemic. There are some pundits 
all of them liberals by some amazing coincidence who are calling on the networks not to show these briefings that contain vital information that I think the American people need to know. And I think one, no, two stations, I believe it was, CNN and MSNBC, both of those stations during the last briefing, they cut away from it. They did not show the entire briefing. The ostensible reason, the claim, the excuse for calling on the networks not to broadcast these briefings is that Trump is putting out a lot of misinformation, is giving us false hope, as if the medical experts with him are giving false information. That obviously is not true. Here is the real reason. The real reason is that Trump's approval rating has been going up. It's gone up in Gallup, where he's at 49%, which is below 50%, but that's the highest he's ever been, I think, in Gallup. And in the Harris poll, he is at 50%. So here's Britt Hume with a tweet to explain, now that you have these poll numbers, the real reason for these pundits calling on the networks not to broadcast these briefings. That's as high as he's gotten, and perhaps more striking, his approval rate on handling COVID-19 is 60%. I bet that owes something to his much criticized briefings and the participation in them of top public health officials. In other words, the country is getting to see Trump unfiltered by the news media. They are seeing him in action. They are seeing him being a good leader. They are seeing him with these experts, these medical experts, and you're also seeing the press being respectful to him. You are seeing him being respectful in return. You are seeing a serious relationship between Trump and the press and between Trump and us, the American people. That obviously is boosting Trump in the ratings you contrast that with the video you just saw of Joe Biden, you can see why a lot of liberals are probably tearing their hair out. They want these briefings stopped. That shows how partisan the press is, or a large part of the press. I would say most of the press, they are focused like laser beams on removing Trump from office, they would deprive us of important news if it would help their cause of driving Trump out of office or having him fail to get reelected. Which now brings us to today's main subject. I've been talking for the last couple of vlogs at least about media bias, about the bias of the liberal media either by not reporting facts or by misstating facts or for just fake news, making things up. I'm talking about the last category right now. And as you can see or have seen from the title of this vlog, there has been so much of this that I have decided that I'm going to have to occasionally do a fake news media bias update. So this is the first one. Here's the headline. Dr. Fauci hits back at media narrative that he and Trump are at odds. Dr. Anthony Fauci is pushing back against the latest false media narrative that has he and Donald Trump not seeing eye to eye on what to do about the pandemic. Quote, I wish that would stop because we have a much bigger problem here than trying to point out differences, unquote, Fauci said in a radio interview. Quote, really fundamentally at the core, when you look at things, there are not differences. The narrative of Trump versus Fauci was fed by a story in the New York Times headline, quote, Trump has given unusual leeway to Fauci, but aides say he's losing his patience, unquote. 
And Chris Saliza of CNN asked, quote, has Donald Trump had enough of Anthony Fauci, unquote? The thrust of this narrative is that Trump is ignoring Fauci's advice and the notoriously short-tempered and impatient president is tuning him out. But Fauci dismisses the narrative, saying that he and Trump are on the same page and that the president usually follows his recommendations. Quote, the president has listened to what I have said and to what the other people on the task force have said. When I have made recommendations, he has taken them. He's never countered, never countered or overridden me. The idea of just pitting one against the other is just not helpful, unquote, Fauci stated. Quote, I wish that would stop and we look ahead at the challenge we have to pull together to get over this thing, unquote. When asked how he has managed, quote, to not get fired, unquote, no bias there, right? No loaded question there, right? Fauci admitted that Trump, quote, to his credit, even though we disagree on some things, he listens. He goes his own way. He has his own style. But on substantive issues, he does listen to what I say, unquote. There you have it, the facts direct from Dr. Fauci, a prime example of fake news. And if I do say so myself, a prime example of another great vlog, which I am ending now. Thumbs up if you like this video. Share with anybody you think would also like the video. Got any questions, you can put them in the question. Well, it's not the question section, it's the comment section. You can put a question in the comment section. I think it's okay if you have any questions. And of course, you can put a comment in the comment section. You can also suggest a topic you would like me to cover. You can subscribe. I would love to have more subscribers. So subscribe, 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 and finally come back and see me again. I look forward to seeing all of you again. And until I do see all of you again, bye.